Hey Wampers, and welcome to the first tutorial in new dark mode fashion. In this video, I'm teaching you how to make a simple but beautiful hourglass. It will also cover how our new mirror works, how to work with curves and materials, as well as quite some general tips and tricks. This is beginner friendly, so let's dive in and feel free to follow along. So let's get started by hovering over the top bar where we can find our primitive menu. We want to grab a curve primitive and delete the second point, then go into the curve settings where we can exchange primitives with one another. We want to make it cylinder based and then also go ahead and increase the roundness, the density and decrease the group strength. Now with this update, we also now have access to all the mirror axes and a lot of you are confused by the Y axis because it seems like it's doing nothing, right? Wrong. It is basically just mirroring it to the other side of the ground. And you might wonder how is that useful then? It is useful because we can actually change where the mirror center is. We can do that by simply grabbing our union and moving that somewhere else. So if you actually want to change your mirror center, you basically just grab your primitives and bring them inside of a union and then you can move them all together. So then to get started on our glass, we want to scale our cylinder a bit thin and in the point setting, we want to give it the full kind of roundness. And then we can also already apply our material if we want. I'm going for a very, very light color. I'm giving it a bit of roughness and a very high transmittance, which is basically the glass slider. We can then also save our material to the library and give it a name if we would like. In this way, we can always apply our material to anything. And now we want to copy our curve point by holding down Alt while dragging it out, scaling it a bit thinner, make a third point, scale it even more thin so we get that nice natural shape where it comes together in the middle. You can also try around with another point, but I think it actually almost looks better with just three points, so I'm deleting that again and just scaling the third point a little smaller. Now that's looking nice, we just need to bring it together a little closer, so I'm bringing this down and now I'm also moving up the union so we can properly see what we're doing here. And it's okay to leave a little gap in the middle, but I'm bringing it still a little closer and now we go to the curve settings and give it a bit of mirror blend. It's basically like gooping, but for the mirror, this is also how you can avoid hard seams in the center of the mirror, which a lot of you actually have in your creations. So in that case, just one or two mirror blend can fix that. Now that we have that, we basically copy our curve that we just created turn it into a negative and make it a little bit smaller. In that way we subtract from the inside and make it whole so the glass is actually really see-through. I'm then just going ahead and um, playing around with the individual curve points to make it work. Still needs to be a little thinner because it's subtracting the middle. And I'm also just, you know, taking the first point and scaling that up a little bit so I, I get the perfect shape that I want. I really like that it's still going a bit inside on the top as well. Now that we have that, we can call this union glass and to basically just grab a normal cylinder from the, from the primitives menu and have one at the top as well as the bottom. You could also do this um, with the mirror as well if you would like, if you have it in the same union, the same kind of mirror will still count for that. You can also go ahead and just copy something as simple as that. For, for those cylinders, I'm giving them a bit of roundness, I'm giving them a fairly rough brownish color. And then I'm basically just copying down as well. And like that, we basically already finished a very simple hourglass, which looks very nice. But what we need next is obviously also some sand. So how do we do that? We basically go back into our first curve, copy that and bring it outside of the glass union. We can then also give it a different name just so we know what all of this is about. And then we go ahead and delete the other two points so we are left with only our first point. 
We want to scale it so it fits into the glass and where our sand is starting and then we go to the properties menu at the right and unapply our glass material. Just so we can choose a new color, new material and I'm also not saving this because we are going to change it for every curve point a little bit so we create some gradients. For sand I'm going for a very high roughness and yeah a bit of translucency as well if you would like. So then we're just dragging out another point holding down alt. We scale that point a lot smaller and go with the flow of the hourglass. We can also change the color. Towards the center we then make it the thinnest and bring that down a lot because it, it stays basically very thin then until it hits the sand at the ground or the sand that's already there. So I'm making it very very small and then a bit more downwards where I want to start that hill of sand we start increasing it a lot again. So the last point I start increasing it more and more I'm also scaling it a bit thinner again just until we have that natural shape on how the sand is stacking up on each other. And then once we have that we can bring it onto a position that we would like for presentation purposes. I'm just rotating it a little bit bringing it a bit in the air and yeah, then we can turn off the floor grid uh, at the right and go and change our backdrop. I'm thinking about going for a fairly light bluish purplish color, probably a bit of pink even. Um, I think that looks quite lovely. And then I'm also going ahead and change the global lighting. This is very important whenever you use glass. Well, it's pretty important anyways because it changes a lot how your materials look like. Um, I went for the pink sunrise here. I think it looks very nice in the glass reflections. And then I'm just bringing in some lights as well because obviously it's looking fairly dark inside of that glass. Um, the glass always makes it a bit darker as well. So it really helps to bring in some lights. You just don't want to exaggerate that. So um, I'm also changing the color and bringing that luminance down. I'm making it come a bit more red, kind of orangey from one side and a bit bluish from the other side and that, that's also a way on how you can create some nice gradient and some color contrast in your creation. So once you're fully happy with your creation, make sure it's nicely centered because you are basically the camera. And then we go on publish on the top right. Here you can also see how it will be displayed on the discover page. You can choose between different kind of thumbnails and you can type in a title. We just call it hourglass. You can call it whatever you want, of course. And we can also add some hashtags as labels that people can click on. You can share it in share your womp and also choose your copyright settings if you don't want other people to use your creations. You can then click on publish the project and yeah, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and we are very excited to see your creations on the discover page as always. So yeah, I will see you in the next video.